What's up guys? Today we are here once again with Mort. And Mort, my friend, what are we doing here at your house again for? Today we are gonna talk about the Nintendo GameCube and in particular, my Nintendo GameCube collection. So excited to show you guys what I've got, some of my favorite games on the system, some of Riff's favorite games yeah. on the system, and just kind of gush about our love of the Nintendo GameCube. But it's time for you to show us what you got back there. Go show us more. Let's do it. Welcome to the game room, and today I'm excited to tell you about my GameCube collection. The GameCube was Nintendo's next entry after the Nintendo 64, really right after 3D games were starting to kind of get more and more understood. And so here we enter this age where you get this um, type and style of game and graphical presentation that takes those little sprites and imagines them in even greater detail than before. Competing with it in that generation was the PS2 and the Xbox. The GameCube had 591 games in its library. I've got about 350 of those titles right here in physical form. When I think about the GameCube, I think about uh, you know going from that jump from the 64-bit, 32-bit era into this, I got really into collecting games for the system, especially over the past five or so years. Oftentimes now it's really challenging to collect for the GameCube because of the three systems, you have the multi-platform games that are on all three systems, the GameCube ones tend to be the most expensive, yet they're probably the most middling in their performance, meaning that the PS2 games seem to struggle the most, the Xbox ones seem to be the graphically the strongest or have the best frame rates, the GameCube games land somewhere right in between. But with the GameCube, we got that great controller, we got the WaveBird, our first sort of real good working wireless uh, controller, something that I still use to this day to play my GameCube games. Games. So I've got my GameCube games, as with all my games, organized in alphabetical order. Uh, starting up here with uh, 4x4 EVO 2 and ending of course with Zoo Cube. Um, over here I've got, in this section of the game uh, wall, I've got a few of the harder to find GameCube games like Cubivore and Gotcha Force. Now a lot of people say, how do you build a collection of this size? And a lot of patience is required. I got those games in trades and also I bought a lot that had um, Cubivore in it. I sold every other game that I got in that lot, made all my money back, kept Cubivore, so essentially added it to the collection at no cost to me. So in the collection, uh, starting up here, you've got a lot of games that came out for the console, many of which were exclusive, but a, a good amount were multi-platform. Um, some of the unique uh, individual games for the GameCube are like the Baton Kaitos uh, series. Um, you've got games uh, like Chibi Robo, um, I don't know that City Racer is on another system, but I might be wrong. Custom Robo. Um, I also love having the Donkey Konga games with the weird bongo controllers. Uh, on and on down to Freedom Fighters, which again I'm excited to talk more about, and Fire Emblem. And then continuing on down here, I've got myself a sealed GoGo Hyper Ground, uh, Hyper Grind. Um, got this a long time ago, and um, I'm tempted to sell it and just buy an open copy, but this is a really hard game to find anymore. Um, in addition, I started really going after a lot of the big boxes that the games came in. So Zelda Four Swords, of course the Mario Party series with these two big boxes, um, probably um, some of my favorite games like the Mario Superstar Baseball games. We really started to get these Mario Sports titles in a really fun way on the GameCube. One of my favorite compilations ever, Midway Arcade Treasures 3. Um, a game that's multi-platform, but I still own uh, a couple copies of it. Uh, one for GameCube and one for the original Xbox. In addition, continuing on, we've got Odama. Uh, just added this box to the collection, um, which I'm really excited about. Thanks so much, Phil, at the Mandarian Orange Show. Um, in addition, the Pikmin series starts on the GameCube, and of course, Fantasy Star Online Episodes 1 and 2 Plus. Now, I just got to point this out to everyone who's watching this video. There are two versions of this game. Uh, this one is the original version. This one is, is more updated, hence the 1 and 2 Plus. Uh, to address certain issues that this game had. In addition to 
those, we've got the Samurai Jack game. Games like, uh, this is one that got a ton of praise, uh, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy uh, back in the day. Uh, in addition, probably some of the best Star Wars games ever made are on the GameCube and are exclusive to the GameCube, particularly Rogue Leader, uh, Rogue Squadron, uh, one of the best games uh, in, in the series. Uh, also, Mario gets his 3D uh, run here in Super Mario Sunshine, a game that people weren't thrilled about when it came out, but has since grown a huge following. Um, and then finally down here, we've got the DK Bongo set. Um, got that at the Goodwill for eight bucks, um, complete in the box. Uh, and of course, uh, some of the random ones, like the Beautiful Joe series. And let's not forget up here, the Mario uh, Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. So. A lot of fun games. I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite ones with you guys. Uh, Riff and I are gonna share with you which ones we like the most from the GameCube. Check it out. All right, here we are ready to talk about a few games that we love. And to let you guys know, we're not going into a big long history of the games. We're just gonna tell you some of our favorites. Does that mean they're rare? It might, but generally, I think the games we chose today are just more the games that we enjoy playing. Strictly. So for me, these are games that if I you know, go to the GameCube, like what would be fun to play right Absolutely. now? I could just pop it in and play the game. These are games that I might go to first. Let's hear it, what do you got? Here we go! So my, one of my choices to play is I love playing racing games and a couple of racing games that I love for the system are games like Extreme G3, um, which is sort of like Wipeout. Um, it started on the N64 with Extreme G1 and then XG2, but there's something about this version on uh, the GameCube that I just love to play. Yeah. It looks great graphically, it plays fast, and it's super exhilarating to play. Also love the Midway Arcade Treasures series. Oof. But why I love this game, and particularly number three, is it's got Hydro Thunder, it's got Rush, uh, the Rush series on it. Did you play those games a lot? I love Rush and Hydro Thunder. It's some of me and Ricky's most quoted video games that we play. Awesome. Sometimes Ricky and I are sitting there and he'll go in my ear and go, Rush. So. <laughs> Rush 2049, the version on this is not uh, an arcade version or anything like that. It's the Dreamcast version. So it's got the four player battle Ooh. mode, all that kind of stuff. Rush 2049 is my definitive favorite racing game of all time. Wow. And the version on the GameCube is great or the Xbox is also great as well. But I love playing this game. I like it. Here we go! I'm gonna start off with Eternal Darkness. This game, I love horror games, survival horror, anything, and as I've mentioned before in the show, I love when it messes with your mind. Yeah. And if you don't know anything about Eternal Darkness, go play it and don't look up anything about it because yeah. it will mess with your brain. How do you feel about this game? I love this game. I played it uh, almost all the way to the very end until I got stuck and I realized I was gonna have to reset my save to do it. But the, uh, it's a little gimmicky with some of the volume stuff and things that it does. Now, especially now. nowadays. However, uh, as a story, as gameplay goes, I love Eternal Darkness. It's probably in my top five GameCube games uh, on the system. Here we go! So I love the SSX series, but in particularly, I love Tricky, probably the most of all of the games. Because I love Ricky too. <laughs> we all love Ricky. <laughs> what I love about Tricky is that as the series continued, it went more open world. Yeah. This game's more contained, which is a little bit simpler for me. I like going to a simple clean menu, picking the race I want to go, doing kind of the traditional, yep. here's the circuit of races or whatever, um, the tricks, the gameplay. I, I can pick this game up all the time and just play it and just goof around and have a great time. I'd say Metal Jesus approves of that. Who? Metal Jesus. He's a guy, he's uh, he's a collector for, he collects bikes on YouTube. Oh. Yeah. Like metal bikes. Yeah, only metal bikes. Here we go! Bittersweet to some people, but Star Fox Adventures. And I think Mort and I were talking earlier, and really it's because it's labeled a Star Fox game. Yeah. I wholeheartedly think if this game came out when it did on the GameCube and it wasn't labeled Star Fox, yeah. people would have loved it. It switched from my favorite Star Fox game, Star Fox 64, to this. But playing it initially, I liked it more than I thought, and I wasn't really in the crowd of people that didn't like it, but I enjoyed it. It's in the background too right now. Mort, show him, Mort, duh. Oh, you can kind really of see it. in there. Okay. But, you know, it started out as a Dinosaur Planet on the Nintendo 64. Yep. This is really Rare's kind of last 
Nintendo game that they were a part of that they went sent out on to sort of finish their time. Yep. And during the N64 era, Rare was, you know, the premier developer Absolutely. outside of Nintendo. Absolutely. Uh, and and the, the in-house people with Nintendo. But it plays well. The world's pretty great. It's got some of the standard Rare, like, fetch quests that they got really into uh, during their Big sort of time. games. Big time. But still fun. What did you say? I called you a Kazooie. Oh. Uh, I don't know why, but the game has Slippy in it, so... And when they're slippy, there is... Ribicky? We don't know. Here we go! Everybody played Goldeneye. Yes. Constantly. Never ending. And of course, uh, you know, many played Perfect Dark, but uh, the same developers went on to make the next series of games called Time Splitters. Now, Future Perfect is a bit of a pricier game, but Time Splitters 2 is really the one that, you know, for me, my nostalgic sort of awesome. bells go off for. So even graphically, some of the uh, assets and things that they do are pulled from, and even some of the sound effects from the GoldenEye game. That's so great. It's really cool, but these games, particularly Future Perfect, has a really funny story. He bounces around through different timelines. There's like, the multiplayer is kind of as far as console, four player couch multiplayer shooters. It's hilarious and it's feature packed, but Ooh. Time Splitters 2 in particular is, I don't know, there's just something about this game that sort of, I remember when it came out and EB Games had it in their kiosks Ooh. and I was just running around looking for it everywhere. So great you got, game. You got my nostalgia going with the EB Games right there. Yeah. He's checking on the kids. He's checking on his kids. He, he's got triplets. He's checking on his kids. Here we go. A bit of a different pick right here, and I'm not sure how anybody's gonna feel about this, but we're talking about favorite games. I put so much time into Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer. <laughs> I played the GameCube a lot during the time I was surfing a ton with Ricky, and Kelly Slater was all the rage. Mm -hmm. So we picked this up, and I would play this relentlessly. No, it doesn't really hold up. No, it's not that exciting or thrilling anymore. But as far as something I sunk a ton of hours into, Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer. Okay, now I, I've got to ask. Yes. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater okay. uh, comes along, and then this was supposed to kind of piggyback on Tony Hawk's. Does it play similarly, control the same? Kind I've only of. played that game a very little bit. I barely remember it. Kind of. The thing is, it's one of those games that I definitely wouldn't recommend playing now if you don't have any nostalgia attachment. I could go back and play it and be like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. I remember this, I remember this, I remember this. So as far as a long-loved game, yes, but if you're new to the series, eh. Eh, probably don't play it, but I'm gonna play it. Good. No, right now, I'll be right back. Here we go! So, probably my favorite game on the GameCube okay. uh, is, like, I love those action sports games, Super Mario Strikers, and a close second you know, in terms of the similar genre, yeah. Sega Soccer Slam. Great. Have you played Sega Soccer Slam? Sega Soccer Slam, I haven't, but obviously a bazillion hours. I, so, Mario Strikers is one of my favorite multiplayer games because it always is a tense game. Yeah. The power-ups, everything so happens, like white knuckle the whole time. So great. And it's so fun. Like, even if you don't like soccer, this is a great game to play. It kind of reminded me, I was a huge fan of the Technos Japan uh, soccer games on the NES. Uh, yeah, yeah. And with all the power moves and stuff. So yeah. I remember when this came out, one of the first things I told my brother, I was like, this feels like we got another one of these games with the fun, crazy power-ups, but with Mario characters, come yeah, on. Yeah, and one, one of the things about Sega Soccer Slam that's really cool is that the the gameplay is a bit slower, okay. but the special moves, the action, the ridiculousness is so over the top, um, it's still by today's standards is a really fun game awesome. to play. It just might feel a little bit slower, I think, than some of the other ones, but these games can become really high scoring, you know, really tense, really oh, yeah. fun. and and. Ultimately, these are the kinds of games that when you have people over playing games, these are great games to play with other people. You'll be giggling all night. Here we go! Alien Hominid. If you like Metal Slug, Contra, running guns, anything yeah. like that, you are gonna love Alien Hominid. It is kind of like the answer to all those games combined mm -hmm. on the GameCube. It's on other platforms as well. And there's HD versions of it you can download. Absolutely. But. My big but <laughs> is that this game needs to be played by you guys. Ricky and I, when we first played this, I remember before we kind of knew about it, we looked at each other and we're like, why is nobody talking about yeah. this game at the time? I'm not saying it's a hidden gem, but it's definitely a game worth playing. A uh, hidden what? Gem. Hmm. Have we done a hidden gem video on the GameCube mm. yet? <sighs> but has every other YouTuber done a hidden gem video on the GameCube yet? You better put 
alien hominid on there. That's my jam. Here we go! Evolution snowboarding. This is the room of video games, or the Ed Wood Plan 9 from Outer Space of video games. It is so terrible. It is so hilariously bad that, you know, and you'll find this everywhere for like a dollar, maybe two bucks. And it's worth picking up just to laugh for a few minutes at how stupid it is. You you get That's in fights hilarious. with like like your guy's got like a bat with spikes on it. It's like road rash. It's a like road rash. Yeah, but but when you arch rivals when you when you hit the other human beings and they die, they explode into balls of fire. That it controls terribly. Does it take itself serious too? Um, I I don't know. It's like it's like a little bit in the middle. Okay, like I can't okay. tell if they think it's funny. <laughs> Are they the being skateboarding serious? version of this has Solid Snake from Metal Gear skateboarding on it, which is pretty great. But um, but this is a game that's just kind of like so bad that you just got to try it once or if you see it and you, you're tempted to gloss over it. Yeah. If it's of no cost or minimal cost to you, Get it. grab it and just play it for a few minutes and laugh at how awful it is, much like Tommy Wiseau and The Room. It's probably like the same reason people watch this show. They're just like, it's <laughs> this is hilarious. These guys suck what, so bad. Do you have any games like that that you play that are just so horrible but you still kind of like I'd it? have to think more on that. What? No, we will think more about it and do a video on it. Okay. Games that are so bad, that they're good. Oh, I like <laughs> it. Here we go! There's no way I could have done this video and not include, not even because the community loves the game, but. NASCAR 2000. NASCAR 2018. That's no not the game. But Super Smash Bros. Melee, the definitive Smash Bros. game, the game that every Smash Bros. fan claims as the hailing game, as well as partnered with the best controller for it. I mean, even it speaks to how good the controller works for this game yeah. when they're making new versions yeah. on the Switch. What other video game makes controllers specific because it works so well with a certain game? Why is this one the best? Well, I, I like Smash Brothers. Yeah. I played all of the Smash Brothers games. But why do you keep? Why do you think everyone keeps going back to this one? I'm definitely not like a pro player, and I feel like they would have those answers for you. That's more of like the dodge rolls and the way they yeah. move. But for me, it just felt like it was all at a fast, good pace. You know, mm -hmm. the Nintendo 64 version a little slower now. Mm -hmm. Brawl on the Wii was definitely a slower version with a lot of issues for many people. Yeah. But this seemed to kind of make you feel like a little bit more of a edgy Nintendo fighting platform type game. And this is just really the king in my opinion and probably my favorite game still on the GameCube. Uh, maybe Luigi's Mansion, which I didn't even talk about. Here we go! All right, Mort, thank you very much for welcoming us back into your game room, showing us your GameCube collection. More best game on the GameCube, hands down. Pick one, then we bounce. Quick, one answer. Mario Strikers. Okay, I'm gonna say Super Smash Bros. Melee. Well, well hang on. Yeah, uh-oh. Most fun, Mario Strikers. Best, uh, I don't know. I don't know, there's, there's a lot of amazing games. Okay, okay. Let's, Most let's, fun, Mario Strikers. Different video, different time. Yeah. Let us know, what does your guys' GameCube collection look like? What are some of your favorite GameCube games? Most pricey GameCube games? Sealed GameCube games? Anything with the GameCube, let us know down in the comments. More. tell everybody goodbye. Hey, goodbye everybody. Thanks for having me on the show again and letting me hang around on your computer screen or phone or wherever. Or your mobile devices. <laughs> don't fake laugh for me. No. I'm already dead. Start again. Fire away, as Kelly Clarkson said. All right. He has socks, too. Metal Jesus socks. Checking on his triplets. Checking on his triplets. He's running back. Are you? They're not giggling. No. They're, like, trying to use ad block. What? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's my jam.